Let's add one last item to our asymptotics toolbox, which we'll call big omega. So just as you can think of big theta as roughly like equals and big O as less than or equal to, big omega is basically just greater than or equal. So for example, we know that n cubed plus three n to the fourth, it is big theta n to the fourth. It has the order of growth n to the fourth. Similarly, we can say that that same function is big omega n cubed, let's say, because it grows at least as quickly as n cubed. It is greater than or equal to n cubed. It is also big omega log n. It is also big omega constant. And actually, it's also big omega n to the fourth because this function grows at an equal rate. So it's greater than or equal. Okay. So formally, we say that r of n is big theta f of n if you can take that function r of n and say that it's always greater than a scaled version of that function for sufficiently large n. So for example, if we take our running example from the big O definition, uh, if we have our function 40 sine n plus 4n squared, we can say that that's big omega n. It grows at least as quickly as n. And just plugging things in here, uh, well, here's our function r of n. Here's f of n, which is just n in this case. And k1, I say, is just 20. Though it actually doesn't matter what k you pick, it's still true. Uh, but for my visualization purposes, I have chosen 20. So let's see that picture. So what we see here is uh, our red line is r of n. And so for sufficiently large n, we see that that function r of n gets much bigger uh, in this case than k times f of n. Okay, look at this line. It's totally just pathetically tiny compared to our function. Okay, therefore, it is big omega of n. In other words, it grows at least as fast as a line. In this case, it's a quadratic plus some sign stuff. Okay. So to summarize all of the pieces of our toolbox, and we'll talk about why it's useful in a moment, uh, we have big theta, we have big O, and we have big omega. And again, if we think about this label here as a family, uh, big omega n squared includes all functions that grow at least as fast as n squared. So for example, n squared over 2, 2n two squared, and e to the n, which is much faster. Okay. So now we know all the formal definitions. And the last thing I just want to say about big omega is that it is could be useful in a few different ways. So one way that big omega is useful is when we want to make very careful, really good proofs of big theta runtime. So for example, if r of n is big O of f of n, and you also show that, big o, that r of n is big theta of f of n, it turns out, if you just think about those definitions carefully, you've also shown that r of n is big theta of f of n. So sometimes it's easier to show big O and big, theta, big omega separately in order to get big theta statements. In fact, for merge sort, or even for binary sort in the previous lecture, if you wanted to make a really good proof, this is one of the easier ways to do it. Okay. Now, we're not going to do that in 61b because this is not a really intense formal math class, but you might find that proof technique useful in the future. Another reason it could be neat is for providing lower bounds for the hardness of a problem. And we'll do that in the last couple weeks of the course, uh, but I'll give you an example. Let's suppose we have an array that has a bunch of items in it, and we want to know, do there exist any duplicates? Okay. We've talked about a couple different ways of doing this. And uh, you know, the most obvious way that we did in this class, dupe four, uh, or in this lecture, dupe four, it would take n squared. You can come up with other algorithms that might take n log n time. I mean, for example, you merge sort the array, and then you carefully look at each item next to each other. That algorithm would be n log n. But you might imagine maybe I could do better. Well, what I can tell you is that no matter how much thinking you do, I don't care how long you hang out on the beach trying to think of a solution, I promise you will never find an algorithm that is faster than linear. In other words, the runtime of this hypothetical duplicate finding algorithm will be big omega of n. And the reason is to check if there are duplicates, you have to at least look at everything. So the runtime is big omega of n. Now it's a little subtle, and we'll come all back to that in the last couple weeks of the course. So if you didn't quite follow that line of argumentation or what that algorithm I was describing was, that's okay, and, and we'll circle back to that later. Okay, but here's our tool chain, or my sorry, our toolkit. Be aware of it, really handy, uh, and we'll move on to something completely different for the other half of this lecture.